Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate uh, how to apply Newton's second law in a uh, static two-dimensional type of problem. So let me explain what you're looking at here. Uh, I made this problem up based on uh, the movie Jurassic Park. If you've seen the movie Jurassic Park, there's a, there was a time in the movie where they had a cow hoisted up in the air and they were going to uh, feed it to their uh, dinosaurs. So imagine here that we're at we're at uh, Jurassic Park and we, we're in this giant pen and down here are the dinosaurs and they have created some sort of cow pinata here for the uh, dinosaurs to play with. So we have this 1500 pound cow which is you know hooked to this strap which is hooked connected to this rope tied off at this point right here to two other ropes which are tied off at the ceiling and what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the tension in each of these ropes so I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, tension one that's going to be the tension in this rope this one right here tension two and then the tension in this rope tension three and I'm going to start this with a free body of the cow so when you draw your free body you really sh it shouldn't it doesn't really belong in this picture what you should always do is you know, save this, this is just a picture of your problem. I'm going to take this, whoops, except I'm going to not include that tension there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy and then paste another picture. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this right here. And I'm going to use this now to draw my free body of this part of the system. So using my nice little tool for this, we have two forces acting on this cow. We've got a gravitational force down, that's the weight of the cow. Now we could label it W for weight of the cow, or MG is how I usually label force vectors. Or if you want to just put 1500 pounds, because that is the weight of the cow. All of those would be acceptable. Now, when you draw a free body, you know, it takes take a minute think about how you're defining your system in my free body this is this is my system I'm drawing a free body of this so you're looking for things coming from outside that boundary we got the gravitational force uh, that's a field force that comes from outside there but you'll notice that the tension crosses that green boundary right there or the rope crosses it so that means we need a we need a force vector for that so I'm gonna go ahead and whoops put a force vector that force is up on the cow and that's the force that I call tension one. So there's a free body of the cow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I got plenty of room to do it right here. Write my equation for this. Sum of all forces in the y direction equals zero, calling up positive. We're gonna have tension one minus the weight of the cow. I guess I'll call that mg because that's how I usually label them in my free bodies. And that's it, those are the only two forces so they have to add to zero. So tension one is equal to mg, which is equal to 1,500 pounds. Next, now, we're, now we need a free body that's going to involve tension two and tension three. And I, I see a lot of people, they want to draw their free body here. I understand that. It, is, uh, it will save you some space, but, I, but it really is not right. You should reserve this as your picture for the problem. I'm going to draw a free body now of that knot right there. So if I do that, uh, let's see, what you would do is, you know, you'd start by redrawing that. So it's a lot easier on my system here. I'm going to copy, paste, All right? So there's, whoops, I'm going to move this. All right, right here is good enough. All right, so this is a snapshot of this. Now I'm going to put force vectors in. I'm going to start with the 1,500 pounds. So tension one is 1,500 pounds, and that acts up on the cow. That same tension acts down on the knot. So there's the first force vector. I'm going to go back and put that in black, though. There's my first force vector right there, tension one which we know to be 1,500 pounds. And again, this is an example of Newton's third law. Remember, forces always uh, appear in pairs. Tension one is up on the cow, down on the knot. Right. In addition to tension one, we've got a, another tension, the one I call tension two, acting kind of up and to the right at an angle of 40 degrees 
uh, with the horizontal. Then we're going to have another tension acting up and left. That's the one I call tension 3. And that one is acting 25 degrees with the horizontal. So there's my free body of that knot. And again, you'll notice it's a separate picture here. I'm not trying to put those force vectors in this picture. It really is not good physics to do that. Draw your original picture, leave it alone, and just leave that as a picture to describe the problem and, and store geometry and label the unknowns and things like this. Your free bodies really should be separate. All right, from my free body now. I can. This is a two-dimensional problem. There are two equations I can write for that free body. Equation number one. The sum of all forces in the x direction equals zero. And I'm going to go ahead and call right positive. Now, when we look at our free body here, tension two, let's think in terms of components. I'm going to go ahead and draw those components in. Tension two has an x component to the right, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the components in red. and its y component is up. So I would call this one tension to x direction and this one tension to y direction. These are not new forces. These in red is like uh, you can replace tension 2 with these two. I'm going to go ahead before I move on and write equations uh, draw tension 3's components. So it has a Y component that points up and an X component that points to the left. Now components themselves, remember, they're, they're vectors. They have directions, so it's left and up. So this one I would call tension 3 X direction and this one, I'll do this, tension 3 Y direction. Now, Getting back to writing our force equation, x direction. So that's about these, this one and this one. And the gravitational force here, or the tension one, does not have an uh, x component. Now we, you know, I know it's tempting to write t2x and t3x, but if you look at what that's doing, it's, it's, um, I don't think it's a good way to do it. I think it, it kind of makes it seem like you have more unknowns in your equations than, than you do have. I would recommend we do this. Tension two is the unknown. T2x is adjacent to 40, to the 40 degree angle. So it's equal to T2 cosine 40. So in my equation here, I'm going to put plus T2 cosine 40. Tension 3 x direction, because tension 3 x direction is adjacent to the 25 degrees, it's equal to tension 3 cosine 25, and it points left. So in this equation, we can put minus tension 3 cosine 25. There are no other forces in the x direction, so this equals 0. All right, next equation we can write. Sum of all forces in the y direction also is equal to 0. Again, this is a static problem. Neither the cow nor the knot are accelerating. So when we're looking at the y direction, we're looking at these. This one, this one, and this one. Tension 2 in the y direction is opposite the 40 degree angle. So this is equal to T2 sine 40. And it's up, so it's positive. So plus T2 sine 40. Right. We look at tension 3 here. Its y component is opposite the 25 degrees. Again, the hypotenuse is what we're calling tension 3. So tension 3 y direction is equal to tension 3 sine 25 and it also is up so in this equation it's going to be plus tension 3 sine 25 right. now the other force in the y direction is tension 1 and it's down tension 1 has a value of 1500 pounds I'm going to go ahead and just put minus 1500 pounds equals zero. It'd be perfectly fine to put minus tension one or minus mg. You know, just make sure that uh, in the end you end up with 1500 pounds there. So what we're looking at now is a pair of equations here. I'm going to call this like equation one, equation two with two unknowns. The unknowns are tension two, tension three, and looking right here, tension two, tension three. There's lots of ways to solve these. 
I usually just use good old-fashioned substitution. So I'm going to take this equation, solve it for tension 2. And you can do that by adding this term to the right and then dividing by cosine 45. And I'm going to write this right over here on the left here. So tension 2 is equal to tension 3 times cosine 25 over cosine 40. Now, there's a couple things we can do here. Uh, one, I could just leave it cosine 25 over cosine 40. I'm going to take a moment here and just uh, shorten this up because I don't think I have room to write all this. So I'm just going to calculate cosine 25 divided by cosine 40 and get a value. So what I get out of that is 1.18. So tension 2 equals 1.18 times tension 3. So now, wherever I see a tension 2, I can put the 1.18. So, looking at equation 2 here, here's a tension 2. So I'm going to rewrite that equation, tension 2, whoops, except in place of tension 2, I'm going to put 1.18 times tension 3. So this is going to read 1.18 times tension 3 times the sine of 40 degrees, and I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute, plus tension 3 times sine of 25 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and take this minus 1500 and go ahead and move it over to the right, so that's going to read equals positive 1500 pounds. Now, these guys, I'm going to go ahead and just calculate 1.18 times the sine of 40 degrees. This is equal to 0.76 times tension 3 plus, I'm going to go ahead and just get a decimal for uh, sine 25 as well. I get, that's 0.423. Well, let's just do two sig figs. We'll just put 0.42 times tension 3 equals 1,500 pounds. May have been better to carry three sig figs along, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead with this. These can now be added together. So 0.76 and 0.42 right, is 1.18. So this is going to read 1.18 times tension 3 is equal to 1,500 pounds. So now we can solve for tension 3. Tension 3 is going to be 1,500 pounds divided by 1.18, and I get 1,271 out of that. So tension 3 is looking like about 1,271 pounds. And I can look right here now to get tension 2. Tension 2 should be approximately 1.18 times tension 3, which is 1,271 pounds. Let's see what we get out of that. All right, I get about 1,500 pounds out of that. Hmm. <laughs> A little curious here because uh, tension one was 1,500 pounds. I'm going to just double check and make sure that my work is uh, looking good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and take a look at this equation here. Make sure that tension 2 times sine 40 plus tension 3 times sine 25 is equal to 1,500 pounds. So tension 2 sine 40, 1,500 times the sine of 40 degrees plus 1,271 times the sine of 25 degrees, and I get 1,500 out of that. So I think we're good. This is a little bit of a coincidence here. Normally, I would expect these tensions to be different values. I'm going to go ahead and just check this one, too, make sure we're good to go here. So tension 2 cosine 40. So let's see, that's going to be 1,500 times the cosine of 40 degrees, right? minus tension 3 cosine 25, so I'm going to have minus 1271 times the cosine of uh, 25 degrees. 
I get uh, negative two out of that. I mean, compared to like 1,200 and 1,500, negative two is pretty close to zero. So, all right, it's looking good. Um, I've checked, checked my answers against these equations. I think that they're okay. So let me go over the highlights of this problem. So, you know, Jurassic Park here, we've got this cow pinata hanging here where the dinosaurs are going to go up and try to eat it. Free body of the cow looks something like this, two forces, I call them tension one up and uh, mg down or 1500 down, pretty easy to solve this for tension one, 1500 pounds. The important, the, the, the real important thing here is the free body of that knot, that's the important thing. And you notice that surface that I just drew, you notice there are three ropes that go through that surface, so there are three force vectors one for each tension. Technically one could argue well there's an mg but you know this is a rope you know certainly that knot the weight of that knot is is not significant compared to the 1500 pounds that's why I don't have an mg in this picture. Uh, we've got a tension one down, tension two up and right, tension three up and left. You would typically then break these forces into components so this one would be t2 cosine 40 and this one t2 sine 40 over on the left, T3 cosine 25, T3 sine 25. So again, these red ones, these aren't extra forces. This, this right and up is just another way of thinking about this force. And this left and up is another way of thinking about this force. So the two reds are kind of like in place of this. Then you sum forces in the x direction. That's going to be this one, T2 cosine 40 minus this one, T3 cosine 25. There's that equation. Then you sum forces in the y direction. That's this animal, T2 sine 40, and this animal, T3 sine uh, 25, minus tension 1 equals 0. There's that equation. The rest of this is algebra. You know, this one right here I solved for T2. That's what I did right here. I went ahead and got a numerical value for the relationship between T2 and T3. Um, this thing came out uh, bigger than 1 because cosine 40 is a smaller value than cosine 25. You know, it, had we had this uh, upside down, this could be a decimal here. You, you don't worry about that. That's just a relationship between uh, T2 and T3, which then we can uh, then sub into this equation. So that's why that T2 became a 1.8 times T3. But don't forget that sine 40 that's sitting right there. And then and then uh, these can then just be added together to solve for T3. So hope that this uh, equation helps demonstrate these concepts. Or I'm sorry, hope this example demonstrates uh, these concepts. Have a great day.